Hey yo, I'm Miss Linnea Lark and I'm back with another draw along tutorial on inking faces. Remember to watch and listen closely until you see the pause icon. Then you'll know it's a good time to pause the video and give it a try yourself. All right, let's start by assembling your tools. You should have a palette, a cup of water, some India ink, a pen and nib, paint brushes, a rag, and a pipette or straw. Assemble those now. You will also need a line drawing of a face. If you want to draw your own, you can watch the tutorial on the top right of this screen. If you click that link, I'll show you how to draw a proportioned face. Or, for our purposes today, I recommend that you download this practice worksheet for a dollar and print it on cardstock so you can practice your inking skills without fear of messing up. It only costs a dollar. But once you own it, you can print it as many times as you want and keep practicing. It also comes with an index of images that will help you through the inking process. Once you have a face ready to go on cardstock, mixed media, or watercolor paper, you'll use some washi tape to create a border. Do this by carefully lining up the edge of the tape with the edge of your paper. Make sure they are lined up well, or else you'll end up with a crooked border. And in that case, what's the point really? Go ahead and do that now. Let's go ahead and mix some values. I start by pouring and marking my ink on my palette so I don't forget which well has my ink in it. And then I use my pipette to fill three wells of water. I use my ink and a scrap of paper to mix a dark, medium, and light value. Do that now. I use my two lighter values to block out the shadows. You can't see it, but I have some generic lady faces open in a Google image search, so I can use some photo references of faces. The more you observe from reality, the more realistic your painting will be. When creating a generic face, you can use many references and kind of make your own look. But if you are drawing a specific person, you'll need one specific reference photo, preferably with good lighting. When I'm value blocking with ink or watercolor, I start with my lightest value and use the wet on dry technique to lay down my first layers in the areas of the face that have the darkest values. So go ahead and look and see what areas of a face have shadow. Under the eyes, under the eyebrows, below your nose, under your lips, between your lips. Look for those areas of shadow and block those areas out. Because ink is transparent, you'll need to layer your shadows bit by bit. At least this is the safest and most controlled method. And remember, you can always make your image darker, so it's wise to go in steady, controlled increments, getting darker and darker. But on the same token, you want to preserve the light areas of the face, making sure to leave those areas untouched. Go ahead and lightly block in your darkest shadows using your lightest values. Do that now. Let's go ahead and put a second layer on our most darkest areas. I make sure to move around the face, putting another light ink layer in areas where my first layer has dried. Notice that these areas appear quite dark, even though I'm using the same light value. This is because there are now two layers, making it twice as dark. Also notice the areas of shadow have crisp, sharp edges. Look at the shadow at the hairline, the edge of the nose, and the rims of the eyelids. To create those crisp edges, your paper must be dry or your ink will bleed. Also take note that at these beginning stages, the value blocking looks patchy and odd. Don't worry, because art rarely looks good before it's done. If it did look good, it would be done. Get it? So just keep going. Do that now. Now that the face is super wet, I'll move on to the hair, giving the face time to dry. Only this time I am going to take a more drastic approach to value blocking and start with blocking out the darkest areas of the hair with my dark and medium values. This will immediately provide contrast between the hair values and the face values. Even though I'm starting dark, I never use straight up ink and I sparingly use my darkest value focusing on my medium value, and sometimes creating gradated washes between the two darker values while the ink is still wet. Also notice that I start out by avoiding the areas that touch the face. This is because I don't want the dark values of the hair to bleed into the light values of the face. 
Once the face has dried, I ink those areas that border the face. Do that now. I move back into the face area, layering my values and creating darker shadows and preserving areas of highlight. Notice that my painting style is tightening up the darker my values get. It's important to be more precise and more controlled as you move into the darker realms. This is because there is no India ink eraser. If you go too dark, your best option is to immediately lift out as much ink as you can with a clean, dry brush. Go ahead and try that now. I'm still layering darker and darker as I go. And one way to stay super controlled is to use the dry on dry technique. Using a dry pointy brush, I layer my dark values in shadowed areas where the paper is dry. Notice how I move around the face from dry area to dry area, and then circle back and put more layers on areas once those areas have dried. Go ahead and try that now. I head back over to the hair to continue layering my values like I just did in the face area. Go ahead. Once I've got the clumps of hair defined by values, I add a liney hair texture using dry on dry with my medium and dark values. Go ahead and get those textures. I then dry brush on dark values in the eyebrows and eyeballs. These areas are very fine and very small, and so you need to choose a brush with a very pointy tip that is very thin. Go ahead. Now I'll start adding large gradated washes of shadow. I go in with a wet brush and a dark value, and then use water to gradate the ink outward, creating gradated shadows. In areas like the neck and cheek, the brush strokes are large, but in areas of shadow in the nose and mouth, the technique is the same, but the brush strokes are much smaller and more subtle. Remember, you're trying to get gradated values, going from dark to light. This will create a very three-dimensional effect. I also want to remind you to be careful not to overwork your paper with your brush when it is wet. You can start to roll away the top layer of your paper if you are not patient. Be extra careful when on cardstock, but this is even true for mixed media and watercolor paper. Go ahead and try that. At this point I am finished adding values, and so I want to make sure my painting is totally dry before using my pen and nib for line work and details. So I get out my handy blow dryer and give it a dry. I then use my nib to add in dark lines and areas of detail. Notice how the lines are pretty dominant and create an illustrated or less than realistic style. This is because in real life we aren't walking around with black outlines around our facial features. If you prefer a more realistic style, skip the pen and nib area, go back and do about 20 more layers of dry brushing. Layer after layer of values. When inking lines, don't outline every facial feature with a complete outline. That'll look crazy. Instead, choose small impressions for your line work. The arch of the nose and the flare of the nostrils, the middle of the lips, etc. Go ahead and try that. Now that I'm done and satisfied with my image, I carefully remove my washi tape. When removing tape, be careful to start with the piece of tape that is on top. Carefully pull up the tape by keeping the tape flat against the table, but moving away from the paper. Keep the tape low and taut so that it peels away at a crisp, sharp angle. Go ahead and try that. Lastly, I use my Sharpie pen and white gel pen for the final little details. I use my Sharpie on the eyelashes, careful to get the movement right. And then I use my white gel pen to reinforce my eye reflections. And then I'm done. I hope this practice draw along tutorial has helped you. Once you get a handle on ink and drawing proportions, I recommend you use a mirror or a photograph of yourself to do a self portrait. Remember to like the video and subscribe if you want to see more art tutorials. Good job and happy day.